Hi Haskellings. So for today's retrospective, I was looking at some of yesterday's solutions in other languages, and I noticed that a lot of those languages have a translate function, which is able to translate using a mapping certain strings to other strings. And this would allow us to get rid of this bin function, and we could just do the translate directly like that. Because it's a string, we'll have to use digit to int to convert the 0 or 1 character into an integer. Let's write our tr function now. And this function is going to take a list of characters, but we're going to make it generic. So we're going to say a list of a's, and another list of a's, and then it's going to give us back a translation function which can convert a string to another string, so which is an, again a list of a's to list of a's. We can call the lists that form our map x's and y's. And then we're going to use data.map and zip to create a map from those two lists. We can use from list from data.map combined with zip of x's and y's to create our map. Once we have the map, we then need to map across the lookup function to, to create our translating function. So we look up on that list each of the elements in turn from the string we're given to translate. Uh, digit to int comes from data.char, so we just import that. And another problem is that data.map requires the index to have type class ord, so we add that type constraint. And we have ourselves a nice tr function. This fold function is also a nice generic function which we can call readbin. And we have ourselves two functions which we can reuse in other places. So we can actually put those functions into our advent of code and we have ourselves then a nice one-liner at the end. Okay, so let's do that. Let's put those functions into our advent of code module. And we put the import with the other imports, data.chars already there. And then we put those two functions just at the bottom of the file there. Let's also add data.list and data.char to our exporting modules. This means that we don't need to import those if we use functions from those modules in our other solutions. Um, we still have a problem because rebin needs a type signature, so let's just add one in. Okay, it seems that data.list and text parsec both export uncons, so let's hide that from parsec. And now we should actually have a nice one-liner in our solution file, just like the other languages. Let's move on to day six. And as you can see, we have input data once again that's in groups separated by blank lines. First we're going to fetch our input data, and we have a quick look at it. Just like the example, it's in groups split by blank lines. So we're going to use the data.list.split module, and specifically a function called split on in that module. And we're going to split on blank lines like this. Once again, this is our interact function from our library, not the prelude interact. So we have our list of lists of strings here. So each of those lists of strings is one of the groups. All we have to do is actually concatenate those together and then use the data.set library to ensure that we have only one of each letter in each group. This will essentially combine the questionnaires of the groups in such a way that we see only one of the letters for each group. So we then just sum the sizes of those groups and we should have our answer. 
Let's check that. And indeed, we have our first gold star. The second part is quite similar, only this time we need to find out how many questions everyone in the group answered yes to. This means we'll need to find the intersection across the group of those questions. And in that case, we're going to need to have a set for each questionnaire, and then get the intersection of each of those sets. So we map the set from list function across each questionnaire. And then we intersect those together. However, the intersect function from data.set only operates between two sets. So we'll have to use fold again. And once again, we'll use the fold or prime variant of fold. And we fold across those sets using intersection. However, we have to use a different variant of fold because we don't have an initial set. Fortunately, there is a fold all one prime function that allows us to use the head of the list as the initial accumulator. Now that we've done that, we just again need to find the size of that resulting set, and we should have our answer. OK, let's try that. And of course, that works, and we have our second gold star. We're going to jump straight into today's retrospective. And the only thing I can think that we might want to do is take out our split on function and make a new version of interact. And we're going to call this interact G. And this is perhaps part of the problem of having such a big library of functions is that that name is probably going to be difficult to remember in the future. But let's do this anyway. So we essentially just remove the split on from each of these and we call it our new interact function, interact G. So I think this split module is going to be quite useful to us at some stage. So let's add this to the exported module list. We can then import that module to make sure that the names are in our namespace. And then we create a new interact function. And it's simply just going to call interact on f dot split on new line. The type signature of this function is going to be quite similar to our existing interact function, except f is going to take a list of list of strings because when we do the split on, it creates a list of lists. Now we get a build error because data.list.split exports a few names that are also exported by our parsec library, but we can simply hide those names from our import of data.list.split. This compiles nicely, so until next time, happy Haskelling!